In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, request prompt annotation. This annotation is used to retrieve parameters when the user submit from the browser and uh, in the HTTP server request object. So let, give, let me give you a very uh, short demo. So suppose we have a method here, which is uh, retrieve all the products on the particular category, okay? So string gate product by category. And uh, your URL to access this one is get mapping, okay? And I suppose we call uh, uh, list products, okay? And uh, now the problem comes. Here, let me give, this is a URL to access for this method, okay? Localhost 8080 suppose, and you have a context root. And another one, in order to access this method, you have to have uh, this product. And uh, you have the list products. And you have to give me the category. Suppose you add a category ID is equals one, and I have a category name equals computer. Okay. Now in this method, suppose I have to query database based on the ID and the name. And the first thing is how can I get the ID? How can I get the value? Okay. In serverless, probably you get the request object, then you using dot get parameter and give the key, you are give you the value. Again, okay. here you can add annotation called the request pram. Okay, request pram, you have two ways to do that. First way, you give a string, and uh, the variable name is exactly the same as this name. Okay. The second one is you have a request prompt and suppose your variable name is called a name. Okay, which means this is your key, is a category name, but your variable name is called name. It doesn't match, so it cannot find. So another way you can do is you give a name here, which is called a category name. Got it? Two ways to use that. And now, suppose I'm gonna go to return. Uh, let's go to welcome page, okay? How about that? And now, uh, in my welcome page, actually, I do nothing, okay? I'm gonna do is I just add a system dot out print line to show you we actually retrieve the value, okay? System. And I'm gonna give ID plus category ID and I'm gonna give a name name uh, equals the name sorry for that okay so now I'm gonna run the application and I'm, I'm gonna make a request to access this method okay So let me run it. Okay, um, need to switch to the Chrome to show you the behavior Chrome and now I'm gonna make a request okay from here go to the product list product category ID equals one category name is computer and I hit enter okay it goes to my welcome page so now I'm gonna switch back to our IntelliJ to actually show you the so here goes back to our IntelliJ. You will see it goes to this method 
and you will see the print out the value id is one and name is computer so now you see you can access that but let me make a small change to show you sometimes it might not work goes back to our chrome so in my chrome uh, now i have a category id and a category name suppose in this request as a user I only provide the category ID. I don't have a category name. When I hit the enter, oh my god, you got the exception, which is a bad request. And you got the message required string parameter category name is not present. What does this mean? Let me switch back to the ID, okay? That error means inside the your method this is your controller method and uh, by default when you add the request prime here it means it required in your url you must have a query string the key is a category id you have another query string uh, key value pair which is a category name but the the case i show you is i make a request without category name but your method required it to have a category name so it has an error to solve this problem to solve this problem to make sure this url also can handled by this method without exception through what you can do is you can add a value which is a match to match to this key uh, which is the category name okay category name and you can set required equals false and you can even give a default value you can also give a default value and which is suppose like let's call a uh, default value is uh, uh, search for laptops okay and now let me rerun and show you what's gonna be look like okay Okay, uh, now let me uh, make a, a call. Let me switch back to our Chrome to make a call to show you actually it works, okay? And uh, I need to make a call to here. Let me go back to the Chrome. And uh, in the Chrome, I'm gonna make a request. I have a category ID, but I didn't have the category name. And when I run, it's success. You didn't see this error, right? You didn't see this error again. It's success. And now let me switch back to um, the ID. And here you can see I make a call using this URL. You will get the ID is one. But actually, I don't give a category name, right? So you didn't find and it's gonna require this force. And you give the default value is a laptop. So when you see this print line, you see the code here is a laptop. So if it's uh, it's better in your application have a required force because the user as a get request, the user actually can change the URL to make sure and make doesn't necessary to have this both category ID category name in this query string. There's another thing I want to show you as a last which is the category ID here is a number. In, if you are using a request, which is a HTTP server request dot get a parameter the name, uh, that method, or the return the value, the type is a string type. But when using request param, you actually can use the integer here. And at runtime, the framework will automatically convert this one into an integer okay and you, you can also set it for a double but if you have the if you change the value to be abc abc is a character it cannot convert to be an integer then you're gonna have an exception through 
so make sure this one is a integer then it's gonna be automatic convert to be an integer for this category ID so that's the usage of uh, request prompt. You can also go to take a look at the request prompt APIs to learn more methods or attributes can be used on the request prompt. Thank you for watching in the, this video and uh, see you next time.